Hey gang, I'm back with another video for you today, a Zoom video with Pisara from Parfums du Cita. How are you doing? I'm very well, Sebastian. So happy to see you again. Thank you. So today, in today's video, we're going to talk about the three latest fragrances from the House of Parfums du Cita. And we're also going to talk about three, four more fragrances, and we'll tell you what they are, what I think about them after we talk about the three latest fragrances. But the three latest fragrances are... Cavatina, this one right here. And we also have uh, previous to that in 2020, Moonlight in Chiang Mai. Yes, Moonlight and in then, Chiang Mai. And then before that, in 2019, you launched Le Pavillon Dior. Yes. And then Pavillon. we have a giveaway, a full bottle of my favorite, which we're going to talk about after the three latest fragrances. So if you want to find out about Parfums du Cita, then please stay tuned. So, Pisara, tell me what's going on. What's what? Do, what have you been up to? I have been working a lot on the perfume and the laboratory, and and in the future launches for Dusita. Oh, cool! We've got some exciting <laughs> things coming. Yes, coming in a few months from now. Yeah. Oh, so this will <laughs> be it'll be your second launch of this year. Exactly. In addition to Cavatina. Yes, it's going to mark the fifth anniversary of the brand. Oh, cool. Congratulations. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So let's talk about Cavatina. This one was launched three, four months ago, correct? Exactly. It was launched in the 1st of May to celebrate the Muge Day in France. Oh, yes. You know, I was there on Muge Day in 2019. Uh -huh. That was the first uh -huh. time I was there. I love this flower. It's beautiful and smells so good. And you know, in France, you see everywhere people selling a little bit of the Mugay Brie too. And you give it to your loved one, your family for the good luck. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I really love this flower. But you know, I can't find it here in the States. It's, maybe it just doesn't sell or they don't sell. In the USA, I don't see Lily of the Valley or Mugay being sold. Huh. Is it because... People say, or I've read that it's poisonous if you put it in your mouth. Is this true? Have you heard this? Is it? I, I don't know it at all, but I know about Lily family. That is poisonous. Okay. Like Lily and Wisteria, or the good, like the smelling pep, uh, flowers. flowers. Yeah, but I don't think it's that dangerous, though. Okay. Not like mushrooms <laughs> you find in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> that could be more dangerous. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. But I don't see Lily of the Valley being sold here ever. But I love this flower. Huh. Beautiful. Little tiny little flowers as a very fresh green smell. And it's captured here in your fragrance. Tell me a little bit about this. I, I, you know that like the Muge or Lily of the Valley, it cannot be created by the natural, like, it doesn't exist as a raw material. So you can't extract it from the lily of the You cannot. Valley. Okay. No. So I need to recreate it in a natural way as much as possible. So you use other flowers to combine together to create the smell of the muge. Exactly. And I discovered that the blend of tuberose, that is like a little bit green, the yasmin samba, and also lysia cububa. You know, let's say Kubiba. Let's say like... Kubeba? Kubiba? Yes, 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 yes. I don't know much about this flower. It's from China. It's called Mei Chang. Mm. And it has a component in the molecule that's exactly similar to Lily of the Valley in nature. Oh. Wow. That's amazing that you can take the molecules from the flowers, put them together with other flowers to create the smell yeah. of the Lily of the Valley. And if you come to Paris, I will show you how it smells. Oh, wow. That's like perfume magic tricks. <laughs> yes. <that's a laughs> Sometimes you discover this, you know, it's fun. Oh, wow. So were you inspired for this particular fragrance? I was inspired. Yeah. Completely the by the Orissimo. <laughs> oh, I love that fragrance. That's what you were inspired from. It kind yeah, of reminds me of it. Yes, and I want to add the contemporary and modern touch in it. 
so I want to add the unisex aspect of the original. So that explain you the top notes of Kawatina. Why it's quite lively and citrusy a little bit. It's very fresh. Yes, green. Green and fresh. Yeah, I love green and fresh fragrances. This is really beautiful. It does remind me of Diorissimo, but it doesn't. It's not yeah. similar. Yeah. So how did you come up with the name Cavatina? Do you, do you know the movie The Deer Hunter? When there the was Deer a Hunter? Music. Yes. Oh. And there was like a guitar music. Like, it's so beautiful. And I thought about this name, Cavatina, because it's the name of the, of the song. Oh, wow. Beautiful. <laughs> That's a great Thank inspiration. You. Thank you very much. So let me ask you, this does smell, even though it's unisex, it does have a feminine leaning uh, smell. Do you, do you find men wearing it? Yeah. I yeah. found some men wearing it, yeah. Because oh. now, like, more and more men, they like to play with, you know, flower or feminine has. But sometimes on the men, the citrus came out more than my skin. Okay, Depend makes sense. Depends on the skin. Yeah, yeah, depends on the skin, yeah. Skin chemistry. Very exactly. interesting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so your fragrances are sold in the States. We have yes. them here in San Francisco at ZGO Perfumery. But they're also sold at Lucky Scent. Who else sells the fragrances? Indigo Perfumery. Okay. And that's it. Lucky Scent in two doors in New York and in Los Angeles. And Indigo mm. Perfumery in San Francisco. No, Indigo Performery is not in San Francisco. ZGO is in San Francisco. Oh, sorry. ZGO is in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. Indigo yes, is CGO. on the East Coast or Central? I don't Indigo know where. Indigo is, I think it's in Ohio. Ohio. Is it Cleveland? Yes. Okay. All right. Cool. This is really great, guys. If you like to wear fresh green floral fragrances, I think it's perfect in the heat. Really, really wonderful fragrance. Cavatina, Thank you so much. A 2021 launch. What else is coming out in 2021 before we get to the 2020 release? <laughs> <laughs> Something about patchouli. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> but I'm, I'm waiting to, like, I'm going to send you something. I'm waiting to see what you think. Okay. Me love patchouli. <laughs> <laughs> and more patchouli next year. More patchouli next year. Are you going to do a trio of patchouli fragrances or just two? Maybe, maybe trio even, but Ooh, different, wow. uh, very different like interpretation of patchouli. Oh, wow. So do you use patchouli? I think uh, patchouli is mostly coming from Indonesia, right? Yes. Most of the ones used in perfume. Yes. Is that where yours will come from? Yes. I use that one from Indonesia. I, I think the secret is like we need to blend patchouli with like different kind of wood. For example, I think vetiver wear a little bit with patchouli. And I think you need to sometimes when I create an accord today, I even blend a little bit of spice to enhance the beauty of patchouli. Oh, wow. Can't wait for those. Two patchoulis, <laughs> maybe even three. This is especially for me. <laughs> You will see. <laughs> cool. Do you think patchouli is becoming trendy? For me, it's like one of the best love raw material ever. Like, because for me personally, where I came from, from Thailand, patchouli always reminds me of my home. The oh. smell after the rain. Oh, wow. When it go back to the garden. I think it, it makes us connect to the earth. It's a very earthy smell. Amazing. Yeah. So you, you definitely need patchouli in your collection, especially since you're from Thailand. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> cool. I love it so much. Me too. It's my favorite note. Really love the way it smells. I connect to it, maybe because it's earthy. I connect to the earth. Yes. And, and when you smell it, you feel completely relaxed and it took you to another world, right? I mean, it's mm. like a kind of raw material like that. It is. It is. Plus, it, it's a long-lasting note. I think so. 
Yeah. I think so. That's kind of what I like about it. Plus, it leaves a great trail. The sillage is amazing with patchouli. <laughs> and it gave the perfume that they mentioned, the 3D they mentioned. Okay. It's amazing. Well, I can't <laughs> wait for that one. But let's Thank talk you. about Moonlight in Chiang Mai, your 2020 launch. I have a little bit of patchouli here too. Not much. I noticed but... that. That's kind of why I like this one. It's also very sexy. <laughs> yes. A patchouli gives you the kind of... Uh, it, this this one, the patchouli, is in the teak wood accord, which I recreate the teak wood. You know teak wood? It's a wood yeah. in Thailand. Yeah, I don't know much about teak wood. It's not like, it doesn't appear too much. Tell me what teak wood smells like that's different than, for example, sandalwood or cedar. Very different. For example, uh, the teak wood is like uh, rainforest wood, wood, wood. That is like you, you build the boards or the house oh. with and it's very rare and it only like in Burma, in Burma and Thailand you can have this kind of wood and for oh. me it's like a rainforest wood you know it smell wet it smell very earthy heavy on vegetable on sandalwood it's I, I compose with a little bit of sandalwood and smoky at the same time very interesting and I'm going to say it again it kind of reminds me like there's um and Broxen in here. So you've told me it's musk. <gasps> yeah, I didn't use Ambroxen, but I can guarantee that like there's certain kind of musk that I create the cheek wood that blend together that can keep the feeling of Ambroxen. Wow. Would you call this a more masculine fragrance or would you? I would call that. I, I would call more masculine size. And I'm going to do even more next year, like more than masculine than this. Ooh, exciting. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting away from the flowers? Yeah. I'm, I'm like, I have a lot of flowers in the collection. You and do. I think like it's time to go into the man world. Okay. Well, that's great. Exciting stuff. But guys, this is really, <laughs> really sexy. You should check it out, Moonlight in Chiang Mai. I like it because it does have that musk in it. And it's great to wear in the heat as well. Plus, I think it's appropriate to wear to the office. Very dressy. It's classy. It's classy, sexy together. Really, really great. I love that one. Thank you so much. Yeah. Moonlight. <laughs> Moonlight in Chiang Mai. So, yes. let's talk about Le Pavillon Dor. Is it Dor or Dior? Dor. Dor. Golden, this is a the Golden Pavilion. Golden Pavilion. So this one is a 2019 launch. Yes, yes. And the one, this one, I got the Fifi Awards in Russia. Oh That's wow! Good, uh, thank you so much. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> it's a very so, perf uh, when what do you feel when you smell it, Sebastian? It's green. It's woody. It's earthy, but. It has a kind of an ambery base. Mm. I like the contrast. I like that green bitter fig. It's fig, right? Is there a fig leaf in here? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's unisex. Amazing. It's definitely, it's not one-sided. It's like right down the middle, I think. Don't you think? Definitely. It's in the yeah. middle. Yeah. It has no tender, absolutely. And and you are the first one who told me about the fig leaves, which is absolutely there. And also, if you see the coolness, it's a mint. You have oh, you also have mint. Like, the coolness of like, for me, it's like a color of the lake. There, there is a fig, there is a thyme, there is a herbal note. And there is like, also you can see the movement of the stone when you are at the lake and you know the nature the surrounding the serenity and peace that's great you know this does smell better when it's aged yeah yeah definitely it smells better in the heat also <laughs> you know why because it has also the oak wood that is like a little bit like a whiskey brandy like awesome so there's like a little <laughs> booziness in there. Exactly. I it's wouldn't very, even know. Hmm? I was going to say classic. it has lots. It, it has lots of green touches, and it's coming from the fig, most likely. 
Yeah. It, I think it's depend on like now. I think now the weather is really good for wearing this perfume. Oh, really? For me personally, I think, and also moonlight is good too. I think the last three fragrances are perfect for wearing for, it in the heat. Like even the new one, um, the Cavatina. Cavatina. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think they're perfect for hot weather wear. I mean, I think you have plenty of fragrances that are perfect for hot weather wear. I'm going to talk Thank about you. my one of my favorites from your house. I think it's perfect for the heat. It's Fleur ah. de Lalita. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I really love this one. It's flowers again, but it's contrasted again, once again, with green stuff. And it's galbanum, right? Yes, galbanum resinoid. But there's also um, musks in there. Are there some musks? Um, I think I create my own accord of vanilla mm. in here. And there is a certain kind of like a little mass raw material, but not like as a main raw material. Yeah, there is a certain kind of little touch. Mm. Okay. But what are the flowers here? You know, the flower here are Magnolia Absolute and also Yasmin. The oh. Yasmin from Sambak and Granny Flora. Oh, wow. This is a really, really gorgeous perfume. Do you call this more feminine leaning? For me, I still say it's a little bit, let's say if it's in the middle, I would say it's a little bit more feminine than Pavignon door, but it's yeah. still lean to the middle. Okay. Which, because I found from when I at the I'm at the boutique here, and some men from Paris they like to wear it. Oh, cool! That's good. <laughs> this is really good. This is probably my favorite in your collection. But thank you so much. I'm digging Moonlight and Cavatina as well, but this is really up there, and I think. I like it because of the galbanum. Mm, the galbanum. I love galbanum. it so much. What, tell me a little bit about galbanum. Galbanum is came from Iran. And it's like uh, this thick green um, raw material that is very, for me, it's one of the, the best raw material that people have been using in the French perfumery from the old time, you know, like the oak moss. And for me, galbanum is one of the best uh, raw material from nature that gives you the liveliness, the energy. The other perfume that I use in galbanum is called Le Blanc. I so like that one too. There is a, you, you can feel the connection between Le Sillage and Lalita in a different way. So it's in Le Sillage Blanc, I get more galbanum or galbanum than Fleur de Lalita. For me, yes. this one's more about galbanum with leather. This is Absolutely. more of a contrast, a galbanum contrast with the flowers. Yes, yes. Is that true? Exactly, is that what you got? exactly, <laughs> exactly, absolutely. She has blonde has more structure of the chipre. So it has like the patchouli with wood, uh, like uh, oak moss, a lot of them. And narrowly, so it's a different type, different sparkling galbanum perfume. Mm. While Lalita is different, it's like another tone, another kind of green, green floral. Okay. Would you call this a unisex or was it still leaning a little feminine? Si, yes, blanc. Yeah. I would, I would, I would call it unisex. Yeah. I would All your fragrances are unisex. Yeah, but it's like, it depends on on how how you perceive a letter also. Mm -hmm. Some people perceive the letter perfume as masculine. Yeah. But for me, there is letter. It depends really depends on how you blend it, right? Okay. All right. This is good too. <laughs> it's definitely good, but I think my favorite still is uh, Fleur de Lalita. Um, uh, let's talk a little bit about my other favorite, and we'll come to your most daring fragrance. My other favorite okay. is, is Isara. Isara, my first Isara. fragrance. Is this is your first? Yes, I, I create it even before Dushita, you know. Oh, wow. The brand. Yeah. So this is a modern um, ambery fougere. Exactly. Yeah. So 
for me, it's a right. It's a complete freedom. So it's a sense when you wear and you feel completely free, like walking into the forest and feeling the wind around you, without thinking of anything. You know, being mm. in the moment. So I want to create this feeling from the beginning. Okay. You use. Um... Is it Kumarin or Tonka in here? Tonka, Tonka. Tonka, and then yeah. you have. Uh, uh, is it Clary Sage or it's not lavender? Yeah. Is it? No, Clary Sage. So what's the yes. difference? How do we notice the difference? Because I know lavender; Clary. it grows everywhere. You can smell it, but I'm not a, too, you know, like educated on Clary Sage. Is what I should say. What's the difference? You you. Clary says, you know, it's like the the herbs that you use to cook and also oh. in perfumery and also in spaghetti. So <laughs> in, oh, wow. in perfumery, you have two types of Clary says. You have essential oil and you also have Clary says absolute. Mm. And, and for me, the smell of the difference between lavender and Clary says in smell is like Clary says is like the lavender that is not sweet. You see oh. the lavender, it has a kind of like floral, like violet floral sweet, you know. But mm -hmm. Carrie said it's like a dry lavender. Okay. So it's, it's more, for me, it represents well the freedom. It's like, it's kind of floating smell for me. Mm. And I love Clary said, I use it in Isara and Erawan, which oh. is like, yeah, the raw material in a different interpretation. So then, uh, why did you decide? So you decided to use clary sage and not use lavender because traditionally lavender is in fougeres because yeah. of the freedom that you you you, you say that. Yeah, it... I I feel like clary sage is more modern in in terms of scent for the mm. modern fougere than, okay. than lavender. Yeah, all right. And so I don't use bergamot at all because, like in the old fougere, you have bergamot, lavender. This is also a very honeyed experience. Uh -huh. Also wears perfectly in the fall. Yes, yeah, you know, you've got this honeyed uh, fougere experience and you can, um, in the fall, it's still kind of warm, but it's cool. So I, I think it's perfectly suited to wear in the fall. I think it's a really great choice. Yeah. Even even early early winter when it's not that cold, you can feel it in a different way. Mm. I mean, there are no rules. You can wear what you want when you want. But I think if you do go by rules, this is perfect for a fall fragrance. Wow! So happy yeah. to hear that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's Isara. Now let's talk about your biggest bad boy in your collection. <laughs> yeah. The bad, bad boy. boy. Food Infini. So tell me about this one. This one I'm so challenged with. Extremely, extremely challenged with. It's <laughs> over the top animalic. So um, when I started to launch the perfume in 2014, I have been working to create three perfumes that are so different from each other. So it's a rat. We talk about it's a freedom and this is the opposite. Freedom and then I want Melody de la Mou, that represents love, which is a white floral. And I think, oh, based from my background, yes, this is Melody de la Mou. So it was created at the same time as Wood Infini. Yeah. Mm. So I was thinking about creating Wood that represents the voyage, the endless adventures. So, you know, sometimes you were, yeah, you travel into Morocco, into Safari, into somewhere you didn't know. And it's like a big adventure in every minute. The perfume is evolving. So the, I, I did something <laughs> that, that it was quite daring to start a brand with. Can you imagine? You did start with perfume? a very daring fragrance. <laughs> <laughs> So I use the raw material that is like very daring, like orange flower blossom, sandalwood, vanilla absolute, and wood from Laos. And the animalic part, it came from, 
a little bit of civet blend you know when it blend with orange flower blossom from Tunisia and jasmine that has it in the lake scent as well yeah very endolic <laughs> <laughs> And unfortunately, it, yeah. unfortunately, this is so long lasting. If you put it on, you're not going to be able to wash it off. So, <laughs> do you have a following? Do, do people love this one? Yeah, it's very. You you either love or hate. You don't feel that there is nobody that I know feel the middle between love or hate. There is no middle line here. Either you don't like, either you like it. Okay. That's, that that <laughs> makes sense. That really does make sense. I didn't realize it back though, but it's funny to tell you that like when it was launching in Milan in 2016, Sebastian, were you there? 2016? Yes. In Essen. Yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't meet at that time. So people found out about this and they, they came just to smell it. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> that with uh, with curiosity. <laughs> no, I know some people that like this. Um, it's it is pretty funky for me, though. Yeah, it's, I understand. I like I like animalics, but I like them balanced out with other notes. I don't. I, <laughs> I don't like to wear just animalics. And mm. people say, give it a try, let it dry down, it becomes beautiful. But I'm challenged to wear it in the journey of the wearing experience until it becomes beautiful to wear. So mm -hmm. I, don't I know. understand. Yeah. I totally understand. Yeah. It's tough. Because like it's it's, it was uh, when I started the brand and some people smelled it and they say, like, don't start your brand. <laughs> 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 they say, like, Oh, it's too like too, too niche. But at that time it was like, Okay, it depends, you know, if you call if, if, if people are serious, wood collector or wood attack lover, probably they enjoy. Yeah. But it's, it's totally not for everyone. It's, it's completely not for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we talk about this next one also? This one I am a little bit challenged with as well, Erawan. Tell yeah. me about Erawan. Erawan is a passage into the forest in the autumn. So there is a similarity to Isara, but different. So it has a green touch, but from Petit Grain of Paraguay. So you smell and you can feel like a rye feel, a little bit of tea, green tea, tonga beans as well. Interesting. Is there hay in this one? Yes, there is a lot of hay. In the I think I'm challenged and with the hay. I'm not challenged as much as I'm challenged with Oud Infini. I can wear this one, but the hay can get, I think hay can get a little animalic or something. Hay can be, depend on the skin of the people, mm -hmm. I guess. It's like, you can like, you can get a kind of green thing, but probably it's not from hay. Probably it's also from Pettigrain. I love Pettigrain. Yeah? I should love this one. I love Pettigrain. But it's like, uh, this one is, is interesting because the people who love the perfume, Erawan, they are like uh, people who love tea perfume. Like mm. people in Asia and people in like some certain country like Germany, England. They like this. So it's very niche. Yeah, it's, okay. it's quite niche. Yeah, it is very niche, you're right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we've spoken about most of your fragrances. I don't want to drop them. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what else we have. We haven't spoken about uh, La Douceur de Siam. Ah. Tell me a little bit about this one. La Douceur de Siam, the image of the perfume is like a princess walking into the tropical garden near the Zhao Praya River in Thailand mm. a few hundred years ago. So it's a perfume of the tropical touch, the okay. melancholic feeling, the evening, the happiness of elegance and slow wow. life. So this is, uh, once again, a floral <laughs> fragrance. You do have yeah. tons of florals. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do. Um, and 
do you consider this ultra unisex or does it lean a little feminine right down the For middle? Me it's, it's me, it's lean more feminine, even more okay. than Lalita. It's okay. more okay. feminine. Yeah, I agree. But it it's has beautiful. A rose. Thank you. It has the rose, frangipani, champaka. Wow. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And then last Thank but you. not least, this one. Splendiris. Splendiris. This Tell one we go back one. to France. Go back to 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 the for me it's like a homage to the Belle Epoque of perfumery. Mm. When people love Iris, you know, the beginning of French perfumery. So I want to do something that that show the glory of the orange matter. Okay. So this perfume is like a layer of oris, bergamot, violet, a little bit, and then, you know, endless layer. Mm. It play on your skin. Yeah, definitely powdery. Yeah, it's powdery. Gorgeous. It's like, thank you. <laughs> so, what is your most popular fragrance? It, it's regional, right? Depending on where? Uh, it, it depending on where. Like, because like when you launch a perfume, you launch in many countries. And each country has a preference of what they love. For example, if it's the USA, it would be Isara. And oh, wow. like in Chiang Mai. Okay. If it's Russia, it would be La Douce de Siam and wow. Splendiris. More wow. flowery, you see. Because the demography of people, I think, as well. Mm. How about if the Middle China, East? Middle East, strange enough, it was Siyas Blanc uh, a few years ago. And now it started to change. It started to become like Moonlight in Chiang Mai. Interesting. Okay. And cool. China. China, to your surprise, is an era one. Wow. So I, demographically, people prefer different fragrances. Yeah. I think it, it's interesting because like the taste of the people like in Asia and in Europe, they perceive the perfume and the longevity differently, mm. completely different. Interesting. But what about worldwide? What is your biggest seller? What is the most popular one that people talk about over and over and over again? Um, the best seller that I currently, I, I usually and run out of stock, like it's starting, it's, it was era one, but now Moonlight in Chiang Mai is start to come. Oh. Like, <laughs> running near the era one. I'm surprised because you have a lot of feminine leaning fragrances, but your most popular ones are more masculine leaning. I have the same surprise. Wow. When I look at the statistic, I, I think my most popular I ever have in the collection are men, men. Like even it's Sarah, which is more masculine, you know? Yeah. It's a fougere. Yeah. Very interesting. interesting. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Cool. Well, you um, have some exciting stuff coming out. Um, a patchouli focused fragrance. So, you mentioned at least two are coming out. So are you going yeah. to launch them back to back or will you s skip the next one after the patchouli and do something else and then come back to patchouli? Can back you tell us? <laughs> so I'm going to launch something first uh, in a few months from now and another one in the beginning of next year. Oh, wow. And it's going to be like the, the next year one is going to be focused on... More masculine. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you want to tell us? You have a store in Paris. Yes. And you know, Sebastian, last week, I have a, one of your fans come to my store. Came oh, to wow. my store from Italy. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> yes. And Maybe if I come to Paris in October, I'll stop in. Yes. And probably you can meet some French people who love your, your video, your channel. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. And I'm yeah. always, um, if I'm not at the 
the laboratory, I would be at the boutique to work with my team, and I also love to meet people who love perfume to talk about the passion, introduce yeah. it back to the people. Nice, <laughs> cool. <laughs> any any last things you want to say? So I want to say thank you to everyone for watching this and. I am very happy and honored to be with Sebastian here again, and I'm looking forward, looking forward to to see and don't forget to enter the giveaway. Yeah, It's we're going to talk about very, the giveaway. Very, very fun. Yeah. <laughs> so we have a bottle of my favorite fragrance from Parfums d u c i t a which is if I can find it, one full bottle giveaway of Fleur de Lalita, worldwide. Yes. So worldwide, worldwide. Okay. So what you have to do to enter is to put down what you liked about this video, and why. Why do you want to win Fleur de Lalita? And then uh, put your country. If you are in the USA, please put down USA and your state. Good luck with the giveaway. Good luck, everyone. Thank you so much, Sebastian. So yeah, you're welcome. That was fun. <laughs> yes. Let's do it again sometime <laughs> soon. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching today's video with p i s a r a from Parfums d u c i t a If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Good luck with the giveaway. As I said, make sure to follow the rules. Other than that, please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Goodbye.